Hey everyone, it's Kristen, and today we're going to go back to working on the Dina Wakely Blue Edition Media Journal. Now it's the Blue Edition because it's the one with the denim pages, but I've been kind of into this journal lately, and I'll tell you why. Because I've decided to finish it. Now I know that doesn't sound so extraordinary, but fun fact, I've never actually completed an art journal that I've bought. I do tend to complete the handmade ones, but I've never completed a purchase journal, and that's gonna change. So I'm gonna go through some of these pages, and today I'm gonna do a page with kind of an abstract sketch, feeling a little sketchy. So that's what's going on today. We're gonna do another page in the Dina Wakely Media Journal. I hope you enjoy watching it, and as always, thanks for coming along. Okay, the first thing we need to do is decide what paper to work with. And as you can see, I've selected two white pages here. And the reason I've done that is because this time, I do have an idea of where I wanna head with this. So I'm starting off with white Liquitex Gesso, and I'm applying it in bits and pieces across both pages with a palette knife, because that dark ink is coming next. We're gonna have a dark background. And of course there's glitter, but we're gonna have a dark background. And as you can see, when you add water to the ink, it moves across the page. And when it all begins to dry, the areas which have the gesso laid down first are going to appear lighter. The areas which had no gesso laid down are going to appear darker. And that's what I'm going for here. I want a little bit of texture before we begin. And now we're getting sketchy. So what I'd like to do today is something a little outside my norm when it comes to drawing. Typically when I draw, the end result has a lot of squiggly lines and an imperfect quality to it, but I have to say, I don't start off that way. I usually start off trying to draw something that is pretty, that I find pleasing, and then I'll mark her up later. But in this case, I really wanted to go beyond that and try something that was inspired by an artist whose workshop I took with one of my closest friends years ago. His name is Jesse Reno. And when I was at the workshop, I bought a t-shirt and I was wearing it right before this video. And the t-shirt itself and Jesse's work inspired me to go, you know, outside of the box and try something new. Now we'll talk a little bit more about Jesse Reno soon, but first let's address what's going on here, which is one big old wonky eye, right? But I like it because that eye is going to be very different in size and shape to the other eye. The other eye is small and tiny and will end up having squiggly lines all around it when we're done. And that's part of what I love about this play. It's not about symmetry. It's not about matchy-matchy. It's all about the squiggles, the shapes, the lines, playing and having fun. I put a little line down the middle of the face. Then the little bitty nose is turning into a triangle, squiggly mouth. And it looks like we have a scarecrow in front of us. But I promise you that'll change. Now, as you can see, we're going to start to outline everything that we've done so far. And if you've seen the figure in the end, she has a lot of doodles and details. All of that will be done with a pen. This again is where play comes in, where I'm just looking at what I have in front of me and exploring my options. So I'm starting by outlining everything that I've done so far, and then I'm going to go into the body, into the face, and I'm going to improvise to see what happens when I just let myself go.
Well, she has lashes galore. And now onto that Jesse Reno inspired squiggle around the eye. As a matter of fact, on that t-shirt I was talking about, the main character has a very similar eye squiggle. Is that a word? We'll make it a word. But I wanted to do something really freeing in the style of Jesse Reno. As a matter of fact, I will link his website below so you can check out his work and see what he has to say. But I thought I would share something that he wrote on the website that I thought was really interesting. It was really kind of telling of him and his work. And here it is. He says, magic does not reveal itself easily. When trying to see the future, our eyes must be given time to adjust. To find our true purpose, we must ask many questions of ourselves. We must observe ourselves without judgment. We must allow ourselves to become ourselves. Preconceived plans lead to preconceived outcomes. So I'm going to take that advice and just play. I don't want to have a preconceived outcome, so I don't want to preconceive anything first. That's actually why I've chosen to use a pen only in this section and not first start by marking out everything in a pencil. If I decide that I don't like something I've laid down, I can always change it, but I'm first going with my gut and giving it a try. So I'm going to continue to fill this little girl in with marks, with lines, with more squiggles, and then firming all the lines up with that same black pen. She's gonna come together real soon, just watch.
Well, there's our little artist. And now that she's done, I'm going to cut around her, leaving a small margin of white space around the entire character. And now she's ready for her background. But the background isn't ready for her. I now see that it is too varied in texture and color to really make her pop. So I'm gonna add more black ink, and when it's dry, it'll be perfect for her little debut. Now that I've got her where I want her, I realize I'd like to add some of the doodles that are on the body of the character into the corresponding page. I want to bring one into the other in this very small way. So I'm going to add just some fine squiggly lines to the areas where the gesso has laid down and created a lighter color. I'm going to do that a little bit on the bottom as well. And then I'm going to go on to attach our character and create the next step, which does have color. And here comes our color. Look at that, it's delicious. It's a package of 50 pieces of embroidery thread. And I love the fact that in the package, they came grouped together in their color categories. By the way, I'll link it below. It was from Amazon, a great deal, definitely worth it. And what I'm doing here is I'm just creating groups of color. I've got seven strands of each color category. Of course, you could use more or less, but that's just what ended up happening. And the color groups that I have going are pinks and purples, yellows, reds, and oranges, and blues and greens. So I'm going to cut this thread here, and then in a minute, we'll see what we do with it. And here we are. We have our three groups of colors all made with thread. And now what I wanna do is distress them a bit. So I'm taking the edges of the scissors and cutting into them and pulling apart individual threads while they're still together to create a wad. I want a mess, a color mess. But as you can see, not only will you be able to see the colors a little bit more, but I love the way they've got that distressed quality about them. So I'm taking E6000 and applying that to the circle shapes that we already cut out. Are there any guesses as to what those circle shapes will represent? Well, color balloons. We have our artist after all. Everything so far is in black and white. So these balloons will really add a lot to the page. And if you noticed, I also added a little bit of liquid glitter on top of that E6000, which I'm mopping up with this tag right now. I did that because I know a little bit of that white shape will shine through. And if it's gonna shine, it might as well sparkle.
and we're almost done. We're attaching our final little wads of color, our balloons, with some string. I'm tying knots within the string so that it looks as if it would be a real balloon that's floating up into that black and white and glitter-filled sky. Perfect for our little artist. Thanks for listening. Thanks to Jesse Reno for the inspiration, and I'll talk to you guys soon.